In the September of 2014, a well-known Utau and Vocaloid user named Prince Sio publicly revealed that he was working on a new English Vocaloid with Vocatone, named Ruby, and he posted a sample of the Vocaloid's voice, a cover of the song Problem by Ariana Grande. Pretty good, right? Yeah, people went crazy over that demo. Ruby was still in development when that sample was created, but it gave a good idea of what the voice bank would ultimately sound like. If you kept tabs on Ruby before her release, then you may have heard many more samples of her voice bank, but most of them weren't meant to be shared with the public, and weren't as complete or as indicative of the final product as the problem demo was. They were apparently uploaded to the Clip site before it had a search feature, and so when the samples became searchable later, people downloaded and re-uploaded them before they could be removed. Some of those were demos created to be shared with Vocaloid companies. You see, while Vocatone has access to the Vocaloid development software, as it is a developer itself, it's a small company and doesn't have an actual Vocaloid license from Yamaha. Vocatone can help develop Vocaloids, but it can't publish them on its own, or at least it couldn't in 2014. So some early Ruby voice bank demos were created around January 2014 and distributed to companies to find one willing to publish the voice bank. Interestingly, Krypton Future Media was one of the companies that showed an interest in the Ruby voice bank. But it was inferred that if Krypton became the publisher, the company would demand a lot of control over the project, so Vocatone continued looking elsewhere. Ultimately, PowerFX would be the company to publish Ruby, and she was released October 7th, 2015. She missed her projected summer release by a little bit due to some unfortunate incidents that preceded her release. In my opinion, Ruby's release was rather overshadowed by some controversies that cropped up that summer. People's enthusiasm was just drained by the time she was released, but that doesn't mean that Ruby didn't deliver on her promises. Ruby is voiced by the English Vocaloid community's very own Misha, a New Yorker. As such, Ruby is an American English Vocaloid, and she was designed to sing in general American English that is, American English without an obvious regional or ethnic accent. Some people have commented that Ruby sounds like she has a bit of a Jersey accent at times, and since Misha is from New York City, that would make sense, but that perception may have been the result of phoneme selection in certain samples and songs, and may not be an actual characteristic of Ruby's voice. Of course, Ruby's voice has qualities that are far less debatable. What got people excited about Ruby in the first place was her powerful voice and clear pronunciation. While PowerFX markets Ruby to electronic dance music, or EDM, producers, she was created to be versatile. She doesn't have recommended tempo or vocal ranges, but I feel her voice is the strongest in its middle range, or slightly above it. English Vocaloid fans have been clamoring for a strong, genre-agnostic female Vocaloid for years, and Ruby fits that bill very well. This does mean that Ruby's not the best at songs that require a soft voice, of course, but she is still very capable. A common complaint about Ruby's voice is that it can be fairly nasal, or that it has a metallic tang to it. Like Gumi's Rasp, these effects can be reduced with tuning. Ruby's versatility is largely due to her expanded voice bank. Excluding Luca V4's EVEC voice banks, Ruby probably has the largest voice bank of any released Vocaloid. Similar to Chica, Ruby has many more triphone recordings compared to previous English Vocaloids, which is why Ruby's database is so large and why she can sound so smooth. She has twice as many triphone recordings compared to Cyberdiva, for example. 
and like Micah, Ruby's voice bank is extended, that is, it contains extra, non-standard phonemes. But while Micah's extra phonemes enable her to sing in Catalan, Ruby's extra phonemes are all about making her American English sound more authentic and natural. Ruby has a schwa phoneme, for instance, which is the common uh sound we Americans say, such as the final sound in pizza. Another example that Princio brought up was this phoneme, which represents the way the short a ah, vowel changes in certain American English words. Consider the pronunciation of the vowel between fat and fan, or at and am. Extended phonemes will not be used automatically. They must be inputted manually by the user, though I assume you can set up custom words in Ruby's dictionary to use the extended phonemes. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, like CyberDiva, Ruby's voice bank was recorded using a new English recording script. But Ruby's recording script was created by Prince Xiao and isn't related to the script used for CyberDiva, so the voice banks have very different characteristics. While listening to some of Ruby's samples, if you're a big Utau fan, you may have thought she sounded a bit familiar. That's because Misha also voiced the Utau character Makane Hachi. Indeed, Ruby's voice bank was recorded with the same tone of voice as Hachi, which is not Misha's natural singing voice as Hachi was voice acted. That is not to say that Ruby is a vocaloid version of Hachi, she isn't, but interestingly, a test Japanese voice bank was created for Ruby. After hearing a demonstration of Ruby singing in Japanese, some people said they actually thought her Japanese voice bank sounded a little better in certain ways. Prince Sio agreed with this and said that he and Misha went back and re-recorded some phonemes to make her English voice bank sound more like the Japanese one. Prince Sio has also said that Ruby had other potential voice banks in development, including a voice bank with a softer tone. The reason Ruby wasn't released with a Japanese or any append voice banks is because each additional voice bank for a Vocaloid requires buying a new license from Yamaha, and they ain't cheap. If Ruby sells well enough, additional voice banks may have potential, but for now, Ruby is strictly a single voice bank Vocaloid. Also, since development of Ruby began in late 2013, early 2014, she began as a Vocaloid 3 project. When Yamaha revealed the Vocaloid 4 engine to the Vocaloid companies, Ruby's development was lengthened to make her V4 compatible. This is the segment where I'll be talking about Ruby's character design, and as many of you know, this is more complicated than it should be. There were some very large controversies involving Ruby's designs, and I'm not going to talk about them in detail because it would just drive this video over a cliff. But I do want to at least mention the other Ruby design in this video, so here is an extremely brief overview. Misha worked with some other artists to create a character design for Ruby, and Prince Yo and Misha were told that their designs were passed along to Power Effects. Since Misha is of Latin American descent, they intended for Ruby to be depicted as a Latina. Some early concept artwork of Ruby that was shared gave her a cartoony look and dark skin, which excited many people in the English Vocaloid fan community. However, when Misha revealed Ruby publicly at Anime Expo in July 2015, a very different design was shown. This happened because Power Effects, somehow, never saw the designs based on Misha's concepts, so it commissioned an artist to create a design based on the sound of Ruby's voice alone. Ruby fans didn't like the new design and demanded that Ruby be given Misha's design. Power Effects initially held fast to its own design but eventually capitulated, and ultimately we got Ruby as she was envisioned by her creators. I am leaving out so many details that it's criminal, but I wanted to bring up Power Effects' design for Ruby, if only to say that you shouldn't badmouth it. We don't know who created that design, but the artist knew nothing about the Latina design or the English folklore community's expectations for Ruby. Believe it or not, there were people who liked the Power Effects design. 
with all of that said, I am personally very happy that Ruby's Latina design did get to be her official design. But let's talk about how it came to be. In the October of 2014, Natasha Allegri, a talented artist and cartoonist who worked on Adventure Time and created the Bee and Puppycat series, posted some potential concept artwork for a Vocaloid. Prince Seal confirmed that he had indeed reached out to Miss Allegri and another artist to create some concept artwork for Ruby. Of course, that artwork wasn't drawn in October, it was simply posted then. So while people, in their initial excitement, shared a lot of different opinions on those drawings, behind the scenes, Ruby's design was already quite different. Misha herself contributed a great deal to Ruby's design. She drew these concept pictures in 2014. And a bit of trivia is that Ruby was originally going to have braids, as seen here. But this was changed when our adorable rainbow-colored monster invaded in the September of 2014. As for Ruby's official design, it was done by the very talented D. Artemi, an artist from Venezuela. Here we can see her character sheet for Ruby, which includes all of the elements of Ruby's final design, save for one. I am a really big fan of Ruby's design. I think it's terrific. I love the color scheme with the dark purple and reds and the light green highlights with the white shorts, and I love her sporty urban outfit. I get a very strong Ruby don't need no man vibe with her design, and I like that. Artemi's artwork is what graces Ruby's box and her product page. But if this is the artwork on Ruby's box, why isn't it the picture I showed at the beginning of the video when introducing Ruby? Well, I did that so I could have a segue right here. You see, Miss Allegri didn't only draw those concept doodles we saw earlier. She was going to be the artist to draw Ruby's finished artwork using Artemi's design. This is the finalized Ruby drawing by Miss Allegri, and it is what should have been on Ruby's box. The reason it's not is because of a communication error in which the artwork was not sent to Power Effects in time for her release so PowerFX used what they had on hand, which was Artemi's artwork. Now some people think that Miss Allegri's Ruby artwork is a little too cartoony, especially for Ruby's powerful voice, but I like it. I also really like the shooting stars on the inside of Ruby's jacket. That's a really cool detail. Miss Allegri also offered to do Ruby's artwork for free, despite Prince Cio's insistence that she be compensated simply because of her love for Vocaloid. The one thing that keeps me from recommending Ruby to every man, woman, and child is that I don't know how easy or difficult she is to use. I have not seen enough comments either way to have a good idea of how people feel about her in that regard. But if you are interested in getting Ruby, she is available from PowerFX's website. The normal price for Ruby's digital download is 100 US dollars. Her boxed version is 130 dollars and her V4 starter pack is 199 dollars. Since I am one of those people who prefers physical copies, I have to bring up the fact that there was an issue with Ruby's box. Like I said earlier, PowerFX didn't receive Ruby's proper box artwork in time for its release and so the company had to make the DVD cases insert itself on short notice. And it's problematic, because it was put together very quickly, and it shows. The artwork on the front of the box doesn't fill the space properly, the text on the spine is misaligned, and there are various errors in the description on the back of the box. The worst offense there is that D. Artemi is not properly credited as the artist for Ruby. It's very unfortunate. Maybe this has been or will be fixed down the line, but either way, I'm not trying to discourage you from ordering her box, I'm just letting you know what to expect. If the box insert really grates your cheese, Misha and others have posted alternate DVD case inserts you can print out and use instead. As you can tell, I really like Ruby. In these past, gosh, almost nine years that I've been a Vocaloid fan, I have to confess that for the most part, I didn't pay close attention to English Vocaloids. There were English Vocaloid songs I liked, of course, but not as many as I wanted there to be. I felt bad because I wanted to like and support English Vocaloids, but there was always this disconnect between how I thought the Vocaloids should sound 
and how it did sound. With these new V4 English Vocaloids, they sound so much more natural and genuine that I feel that I'm able to appreciate them much more. I feel like this generation of English Vocaloids has the potential to make English Vocaloid music take off in a big way, and I think Ruby sets a bar for future English Vocaloids. She's not flawless, of course, but Prince Sio did a phenomenal job developing Ruby, especially considering he did it almost completely by himself. Misha provided a great voice to work with, and Vocatone and Power Effects made it all possible. Man, I just want to give them all a big hug. As for the present, I admit that I was expecting to find more originals created with Ruby than I did. Like I said at the beginning of the video, something's happened last summer that softened a lot of the hype for Ruby, and then when her box was released with its own issues, everyone was feeling, well, exhausted by the whole situation, frankly, so there wasn't as much fanfare as there should have been. That said, I was impressed by the originals I did find. There's a lot of experimentation in the songs to follow, and I think that's a good thing, as it shows that Ruby isn't limited to one genre or singing style, and it shows some of the interesting ways to use vocal synthesizers. I would have liked to have seen a few more standard fare songs, but I'm still very excited to see what's to come. I still remember all the days you were here And all the happiness sometimes that I could see All of my life that I thought that I would give to you I thought that it was all that it could be Things that I wanna do I wanna spend eternity just with you in a fragile space of time I lost it all I wondered if that had been selfishness to you Broken fragments all around Of my memories about Like the petals falling from a flower Down to the floor With the things to never be You were in the way for me And I wallow in my regrets I didn't Thank you. 
Try to clip my wings like Simba, I was born to be king. As for my cousins, I'm proud of their success. And really, we just went in two different directions. So you can keep your words to yourself. Now, for all the days, I don't need the help. And I ain't by myself. Got friends and family that make me feel super. Even though I'll probably get there later and sooner, I'ma still do my best. So the answer is yes, I am.
gets there.